I've been providing emergency veterinary care for my patients for the last 15 years, which means there's not much that I haven't seen. Unfortunately though, I keep seeing cases where had the cat owner brought their pet to me sooner, I may have been able to do more to help save their pet. So don't make the same mistakes as I count down my top seven deadly emergencies for cats that you need to know about. Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, and I believe that pets are part of the family. And so in this channel, I want to help you understand and optimize your cat's health so that they can live the full and happy life that you want for them. And the number one emergency condition I see in cats is labored breathing. So if you ever notice that your cat is breathing faster than normal when they're at rest, doesn't matter if you've just been playing with them, but when they're sitting quietly, if their breathing seems more difficult, they seem to be laboring to suck in that air, especially if they're ever open mouth breathing, if they're ever panting, that's not something cats do to lose heat like a dog. So if they're sitting quietly and panting, it's an absolute emergency. You need to be taking your cat to the vet straight away. The reason for this is that cats get a couple of conditions that can cause their chest or their lungs to effectively fill up with fluid and drown them. The main conditions here are heart failure, trauma, bruising of the lung, cancer, and something called pyothorax, which is an infection in the chest, often caused by a penetrating wound or a cat bite. The difficulty with these conditions is that cats, they modify their behavior. So if they're getting a little bit short of breath, they just won't be so active. And you're probably not going to notice that in your cat. It's only when they reach the very end stages of these diseases that you start to notice that there's a problem. And by this stage, even the simple stress of putting your cat in their carry cage and driving to your veterinary clinic could be enough to kill them. Trauma is next. So this is really one for those cats that go outdoors. Being hit on the road is no laughing matter. And unfortunately, it's more often than not a fatal event. Amazingly though, it's surprising how many cats can survive this. And while you might think of obvious injuries like breaks, wounds, hemorrhage being what causes problems in these cats that have been hit on the road, it's actually sometimes the hidden injuries that can be just as life-threatening. So things like head trauma causing swelling of the brain, a ruptured bladder, a diaphragm that has burst, and so you have intestines actually where the lungs should be taking up space, causing breathing problems a little bit like we've just discussed. So if you're ever concerned that your cat may have been hit on the road, if they come in and you look and you see their nails are scuffed, that's one sure sign. If they are really sore, if they've got unexplained injuries, then definitely get them checked over by the vet because these internal injuries that you're just not going to notice at home could be life-threatening. Now, one of the most distressing emergency conditions to see as an owner is a cat who suddenly goes off their back legs and is crying, howling in pain. This is something that is normally due to something called an aortic thromboembolism due to an underlying heart problem. So in a cat with heart failure, the blood within that heart can become very turbulent and actually in the middle of that turbulence, it becomes very static. It doesn't move much and you get clot formation. What then happens is a little piece of clot breaks off. It travels down the aorta, which is the main artery from the heart. And at the point where it splits into the back legs, it narrows and that clot lodges. The problem here is that blocks off the blood supply to the back legs completely. It's incredibly painful. And unfortunately, in really severe cases, there's very little that we can do to break down that clot, to keep our cats comfortable and to ensure that they recover. If we're just dealing with a mild clot, so it's not completely obstructed things, maybe only one leg's partially affected, or if the clot's gone to somewhere else, the other kind of next most common place I see that is actually to a front leg, then it may be that we can control that pain, we can nurse and hospitalize your cat through this ordeal and then put them on medication to make sure that it doesn't happen again. An inability to pee is the next deadly emergency. Now this really is a male cat problem. And what happens, they get a disease with the bladder. It may be an infection. Very often though, it's due to stress and that causes a cystitis. I've got other videos on that that I'll link on screen now. And what happens is you get a plug of mucus, a blood clot. You may get a stone, a calculus form within the bladder, sludge and sediment that actually just blocks the urethra. So that's the tube between the bladder 
and the outside world. And that means that your cat cannot pee at all. It's incredibly painful as that bladder fills up. If you've ever kind of really been busting for the toilet, you'll get a tiny sense of what your cat's going through. But what happens is the toxins that are normally removed from the body in the urine actually build up within the body. And that can cause acute kidney failure. So it just knocks out the kidneys. It causes increase in certain salts that causes heart arrhythmias and ultimately results in the heart stopping. So untreated, this condition is absolutely fatal. You need to get your cat to the vet straight away if they can't pee. One thing to consider though is that this is very often confused for constipation. So if you're seeing your cat straining at all, if they seem uncomfortable, it's worthwhile getting them checked even if you think it's actually a problem with their pooing rather than their peeing. Poisoning in cats is less common than in dogs because they're a little bit more fussy about what they put into their mouths but there are a number of substances that are absolutely deadly and actually very often it's substances that we are giving to our cats that are causing problems. So there's a number of different poisons that are really deadly for cats. The first one has got to be antifreeze. So uh, when, when colder weather strikes or if we're changing the, the radiator fluid in our car, for example, it may even be that it's just spilling out onto the ground in our driveway because of a little leak. That is enough to kill our cats. The substances that we might be giving our cats that could kill them though is acetaminophen, Tylenol, paracetamol, call it what you will, never give that to your cat. It is absolutely deadly. They just can't break it down in the same way that we can or that dogs can. And there's sometimes very little that we can do if that is the case. Applying a dog flea and tick product to your cat is another common mistake because these can be deadly. Some are okay, but some are absolutely deadly. They cause seizures, tremors, coma, and death. So never put something on your cat that was designed for dogs. And then one substance that's becoming more common to apply to our cats are essential oils. Now some essential oils are okay in very tiny doses in the environment, but a lot of them are actually really dangerous. Now one thing I always remember is having a bunch of kittens. The owner thought they had ear mites and they put tea tree oil down their kittens ears they really were not in a good state when they came to see me at the clinic. Cats love to play with string. You know, we sometimes play with them with string on purpose. We have feather toys, fishing rod toys, all that kind of thing. But actually ingesting string can be really dangerous and is in actual fact even more dangerous than eating a solid object. The reason for this is that the string, it stretches along the intestines, but then it invariably gets stuck at one point. The intestines try to contract to move it along and it effectively cheese wires its way through the intestines. There are a couple of real dangers here. So tinsel and angel hair is really dangerous. The string that ties up a roasted meat joint, for example, can be really attractive to a cat for them to eat. Frayed bedding is another example, or a frayed damaged toy. We need to be really careful if there's any string, thread, rope around to remove it from your cat's environment. If you do think they've eaten something, take them to the vet straight away. Cats really don't do well if they become dehydrated. They don't have a big drive to drink. And so if they become a little bit dehydrated, they stop eating. It's very common that that can go downhill very, very quickly. Unfortunately, this is often not a very sudden onset condition, but I see cases time and again where the cat has been unwell for a number of days. The owner, for whatever reason, has only just noticed or have hoped that their cat will get better without coming to see the vet. But then by the time they do present at the vet, the cat is in an awful way. They may have acute kidney failure. Their other organs may be shutting down. And it takes some serious effort to bring these cats round. So the big take home for this one is that if your cat is unwell, if they're not eating for any length of time, then you really need to be checking in with your vet sooner rather than later, especially if they're an older cat because they may have another condition such as diabetes or kidney failure where they're not able to conserve that water by concentrating their urine. Now I put together this playlist on screen so you can dive deeper into these emergencies as well as other emergency conditions in cats. So click there now and I'll see you in the next video. But until next time, I'm Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health because they're family.